Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, this is Paul Henriquez, your client services manager for the University of District of Columbia. Um, I'm on the call with my colleague and your account manager, Tom Callen. Um, he'll be speaking uh, a little bit too uh, as well. So um, I'll turn it over to him and then we'll get it uh, started um, with our session, Tom. I think you're on mute, Tom. Thank you. Uh, thank you for catching that. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, everyone. Uh, as Paul mentioned, my name is Tom Cowan. I am your, you know, account representative. I manage your account. I am your go-to point of contact for all things at Tripoli. Please uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, regarding anything regarding the database, content, or even just at Tripoli in general. I'm fairly knowledgeable, and I'm here to help, uh, you know. Just, just let me know, uh, and you know, feel free to shoot me an email. I mean, you have my cell phone number. You can send me a text. I'm available uh, whenever. Uh, so, you know, thank you for joining us, and I'm going to hand it back to Paul. Great, thank you, Tom. Um, we're going to have a few slides in the beginning, and I'm going to be doing a live search um, in uh, I really explore today. We, um, as a reminder, everybody is on mute. Um, if you do have questions, enter them in the chat box as we go along. Um, my part will be about 25 to 30 minutes, and then we'll have plenty of time for questions and answers in chat and over the phone uh, afterwards. And we will be recording this session, and I will be sharing this recording in slides with your uh, librarian. She will uh, distribute them, um, and she is on the call uh, today. So just to get started, for people that are not familiar with the IEEE, we are the world's largest technical membership society, and we have about 420,000 members in 160 countries. Um, our mission is to advance technology for humanity. Um, a lot of you at UDC know us through our conference and journals um, articles in Explore. Um, that's one of the things that we do. We, of course, are a membership organization, as I just mentioned as well. Um, we are a standards developer. Um, you do have access to standards in Explore, and I'll discuss a little bit about that as we go along. And we also have some ebooks and e-learning, and Tom will uh, talk about that a little bit before we get into our live session. Um, and just about how IEEE supports engineers. Um, we have sections and chapters around the world that uh, help share technical interest and solve local problems within communities. And we have affinity groups also within IEEE. Um, two very popular ones, especially at universities, are the Women in Engineering group and our Young Professionals group. Um, we do have IEEE student branches as well, which are great opportunities to network and also um, you know, have tech challenges and social gatherings and things. If anyone on the call is interested about the student um, branches, um, please uh, do touch base with me and I can give you a little bit inf more info on how those work. Um, because it is a great way to promote the IEEE on campus and um, how we help engineers. And also for those members, some of you may be on the call. I always seem to have one or two members that I run into in these webinars. We have member elevation and awards ceremonies for people who are influential uh, in their field and also have been members with us for some time. Um, so we like to recognize uh, those folks. This is a little bit about your IEEE Explore subscription. Uh, you have what is called the IEL package, which I like to call the all you can eat of IEEE Explore. It gives you unlimited full text access to our conference and journals collection, and also 3,000 active and approved IEEE standards and the IEEE standards dictionary online. So there's a lot of content in there. There's over 5 million full text articles in the database at this point. Um, and many users uh, daily. And I will uh, talk a little bit more about the subscription and how it works when I go live um, in Explore. Um, especially for the librarians on the call, I wanted to point this out because we do have an advanced search in IEEE Explore. It has changed a little bit. We kind of reworked the back end of Explore a bit. Um, so the way the order of precedence in terms of search operators in Explore now works is more along the lines with what you would see, say, in uh, Web of Science. Um, advanced search now supports Boolean operators in the search boxes themselves. You used to have to use the drop down for your end or or not, but you can type it right in there. Um, so as I gave an example there, um, the search used to be processed as such, but now 
um, the order is changed a bit. So if you want to search um, reduce or suppress both truncated and harmonics, you would put those two um, in that first line and the harmonics since the um, order is not end and or uh, now. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about search, um, advanced search and how it works when we go live as well. But I just wanted to put this slide in there for uh, reference if you need it, um, since it did change a little bit. These are some new journals that you'll have access to with your subscription for 2021. There may be more added as we go along. Every year we're adding more and more. Nothing needs to be done. It's part of your subscription. So you'll see these uh, journals live as they're released. And conferences, of course, with all societies these days, everybody's been going virtual, but that's kind of been an advantage for us given our global reach, because we've seen four to five times more attendees at conferences um, who may not have been able to travel before uh, attend these virtual conferences. One last May actually had over 20,000 registrants from 75 countries. So our conference collection is still very much active and exploring. That's a big piece of what you have access to as your IEL subscription and students typically like to publish in our conferences more um, because that's where um, they can get started. There might be ongoing research. They want to get feedback from professionals um, and maybe develop it into a journal article later on. So it's very popular, the conference collection and publishing in conferences with our students. I'll let Tom talk a little bit about the e-learning library and eBooks, and then we'll go into uh, our live demo of Explore. Tom. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah. Hello. So, uh, just to let you know, IEEE has a couple different perpetual access options, uh, specifically the IEEE e Learning Library and the I our IEEE eBooks collections. Uh, the IEEE e Learning Library are, uh, you know, self-driven courses. Uh, they're about usually about an hour each. Uh, you know, we can gain you, give you access to the entire library, the entire course catalog, or we also have more refined packages based on specific topics called course programs. And those are usually sets of somewhere between, you know, four to 12 courses all around a central topic uh, that you can then take. And um, once you take these courses, at the end of them, there will be a uh, sort of test or quiz given for verification purposes. And then you can go on to uh, receive like credit hours for uh, completing those courses uh, for continuing education units. And I think uh, professional development hours, or I might have those a little bit confused. There uh, and also, so we can also talk about ebooks. So IEEE has, uh, you know, a number of different ebooks collections. We actually have uh, right now about eight of them. Uh, there's about four to five thousand titles uh, within all of the collections completely. Uh, these can be purchased uh, by collection and then further purchased either by year and then back file and front lists are available for each of them. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, these are perpetual access options, so they're one-time purchases, and you have access to them, uh, you know, in pretty much uh, in perpetuity from that date of purchase. And as I mentioned, you know, you just push the front list if you were to uh, need uh, access to uh, content published down the line after the purchase. Yeah. Uh, Paul, you know. Yep. And our eBooks, Tom. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was uh, kind of covered them at the same time. So, uh, yeah, so these are our ebooks collections. And as uh, it seems here, you know, there's Architect House, uh, the IEEE Wiley collection, the IEEE Wiley Telecom collection, the MIT uh, Press collection, uh, the Morgan and Play Claypool Synthesis collection, the Now Publishing Foundations and Trends, River Publishing, and SAE ebooks. Uh, you know, these mostly are on topics of engineering and computing for the most part. Uh, I do have breakdowns on percentages for each collection and kind of what areas they uh, do highlight within each. So if you are interested in some ebooks, I can definitely give you that information to kind of allow you to determine which packages might be the right ones for you. Thanks, Tom. And when I go live and explore, we'll show you where you can browse uh, these collections because you can browse uh, them for free and see what's in there. And then of course, if you're interested in anything, you can discuss it um, with Tom. One last thing before I go live and explore, we do have a free app. It's called the My Explore app. I'll discuss the IEEE personal account in Explore where you can save search alerts, uh, content alerts, author alerts. 
um, and things like that. Also save your search history. That free login that you can set up, that login works with this app too, both for iPhone and Android devices. So that's kind of handy. Say you're doing a literature review, you wanna save uh, a few searches and just be alerted when something else new comes up and explore instead of having to go back to it all the time. It will direct you right back via an email um, and those come once a week. So, um, this is the link to explore. You can also find that on your library homepage and I will move over to explore right now. And I'm actually in a demonstrator account right now. You'll see at the top when you're on the UDC network um, and you say, go to explore through your library website, or you go to that link that's in our slides. Um, and thank you, Megan. She put your librarian is on the call and she put the link in chat to the library page. Um, so you can go uh, that way as well. Um, once you go through that authentication process, this is what gives you full text access to at the top. You'll want to look for access provided by University of the District of Columbia. Um, and again, this is pretty much mirroring what you have access to. And as Megan has pointed out in chat, you can sign in with your UDC email. And when you're in, you can see under the My Settings uh, menu, there's a What Can I Access page. This is a nice page, especially for librarians too, because I know I get questions um, from librarians sometimes. What do we have access to? So this gives you a complete rundown of what UDC subscribes to in Explore with live links. Um, so you can always refer to that page under My Settings there. And then at any point, you can click the IEEE Explore logo and go back to the home page. And I know I just mentioned that app, so I want to start with this first. There's a create account link here at the top. And with your UDC email or a personal email, you can create a free personal account in Explore to save a lot of content um, that you might in Explore. This is separate from what you have access to through UDC. Your UDC subscription to Explore gives you full text access. The account uh, the free account does not, however, it allows you to personalize Explore. And I'm going to sign into my um, personal account here. And you'll see my name appear at the top because I'll be doing a few things as we go along today. Um, and one thing I'll mention here is under my settings, once you have a personal account, you can actually go into preferences under my settings and set up Explore how you'd like to see it. For example, how many search results you want on a search page, um, for instance, or how you want your search results sorted. You can turn your search history on and off. Um, it defaults to off, so if you want that on, you just need to make sure you click on when you first sign up. And you can even set a default for citation downloads. So again, that's handy if you're doing, say, a literature review or a patent search and you have a certain way you wanna download these things. And then you would just click update at the bottom and it saves your preferences. So now Explore is kind of set up how you wanna see it. Um, and I can click the Explore logo, go back to the home page again. And I'll mention under the browse section, this is where you can browse um, our e-learning library under courses. You can also browse our eBooks here. And again, you can browse them for free, see what's in there. Um, and again, talk with Tom if you uh, have any interest in any of the collections. Um, especially the courses, because I know uh, that IEEE members can get a discount for a course, but I caution against that because um, we could provide university-wide access to an e-learning course per se, and it would be a lot more um, financially beneficial and everybody would have access. So if you have any interest, talk to your librarian, of course, and then um, certainly they can get in touch with us. I like this popular um, link under browse because that gives you a kind of overview of the topics trending uh, in Explore. So some of the big ones like 5G, edge computing, um, data mining, these are some big topics that people are searching for in Explore. And it breaks them down by content groups as well. So whether it's journals, conferences, standards, or books, um, you know, you can do that. And like the eBooks and e-learning, the standards that you have access to, you can browse standards here. Um, and standards can be a little bit difficult um, to navigate. So if you ever have questions on them, um, do let me know. Um, but you can search by your standards collection, the number of the standard itself, the topic of the standard, or if you're familiar with the standard classification codes, you can search by that in the browse page. Um, so standards are very important. They set, um, 
consistency across products and industry. So it's nice to have access to that as part of your subscription. But what we're going to talk about here is the basic search bar. You can do a lot with this, like a citation search from the home page. It'll change the boxes. You can also do an author search. But from here in the all box, this will be a metadata only search. I'll talk about the advanced search uh, in a little bit, whereas that's where you can do full text searching and a lot of other things. But I'm going to do a pretty simple search to start with. I'm going to do computer science in quotes to keep it as a phrase. You can use your Boolean such as and or or not in this box. You can also use the near and onear operators, which search words within words. So if you did say, for instance, an example, pardon me for that, computer near backslash five science, that would search computer within five words of science or science within five words of computer. I could put an onear to keep those words in order, for instance. So that's an example of what you can do. Um, with this search box. And you can also use the asterisk, which truncates words as well, which I had in that one slide earlier. But I'm just going to search computer science as a broad term. And you'll see there's going to be a lot of results that we get for that. And here we are in a result page, over a half a million results. So I can scroll down and you see there's some publications that you might be interested. It gives you some suggestions here. But maybe I want to narrow down this uh, search result a bit. So I'm going to put simulate and I'm going to truncate that word. And this search result box up at the top, it'll give you type ahead suggestions um, based on titles and index terms. You can use your Boolean operators um, and such in here as well. Like I use the truncation. I'll add this term to my search to kind of get down and narrow down a little bit. So I'm searching computer science as a phrase with the term simulate. Um, thrown at it. So that knocked about 300,000 results off. And this is a pretty healthy result list. So I'm going to just stick with this. But you can do a number of things. And the nice thing with the IEL subscription, I could click these first two articles and IEL gives you the option to download up to 10 PDFs of an article at a time. So if you just want the article itself, you can do a bulk download of them right from this menu bar. And you can also like you can in preferences, you can set this number, but you can change the number of results you see on a page and even export your results into a spreadsheet or get your citation exports for these two articles I have highlighted. And with your personal account, you have access to our Collaboratech site, which is kind of our LinkedIn for engineers, as I like to call it. Um, your personal account login works seamlessly with this and you can have a personal folder of documents over on Collaboratech. And another great thing you can do with the personal account, I could do, you know, a search alert for this, like computer science, and you can save up to 15 search alerts at a time. You will get an alert on Wednesdays weekly if any new content matches this uh, search that I just did. And you can access your search history in this blue bar at the top. Um, and search history is nice because it's not only recording what you're searching, but for instance, I could go down to the bottom of my list, add a couple uh, things I could combine 5G and computer science as a term and I could do it with and or or not. So not only are you recording what you're searching, if you have particularly long search strings, you can go into your search history and com com um, excuse me, combine lines of search. Um, and there is a limit of 20 terms per search in Explore. That does not include the operators. So just to keep that as a reference. I'll go back to my search result page. And from here, <clears throat> I'm going to shrink that up. You can limit down maybe by conferences and journals if you want. Um, and you'll go down to the kind of heart of the search page. You can sort it a number of ways, both by date, alphabetically. You can even sort articles most cited by either papers or patents. And patent citations do exist in articles in Explore if they're there. Those come from the US Patent Office, uh, the European Patent Office, and the World Intellectual Property Organization. So you will see those from time to time. And you can show all of your results, um, your subscribed content, which is pretty much everything in Explore article-wise. And you can also limit down to open access articles. You can limit by date on this search result page. And there's a number of other facets in here 
you can see that by author, by affiliation, what university or company these articles are coming from, even by publication title or publisher. And you can even see articles in the search results set that might have media like video or PowerPoint attached to them, or even code or data sets. Um, we do have articles that have code and data sets attached to them. Um, authors don't need to include that, but we like to have that as an option because it does help with research reproducibility um, if people are doing experiments and things like that. And you can even go down by conference location if you're looking at conference articles um, and by standard status or type. I like the publication topics too. These are the index terms. These are generally accepted standardized terms. Um, you know, sometimes I like to go and run an affiliation search by, by state or by university in advanced search. And then I go into publication topics in the search result page just to see, all right, what are some of the most popular research topics surrounding UDC or surrounding Virginia or District of Columbia, for instance. Um, that's kind of an interesting way to go and do a search result there. So, so I'm going to go back up here. And the standards dictionary terms will always appear when you do a search here at the right. And again, much like the index terms, those are from our standards dictionary and they're generally accepted terms um, that you know you might think about adding to a search, for instance, to kind of keep things a bit more neat. Um, I'm gonna go and click uh, on this article here um, since we're talking about outer space and a lot of things these days. This has to do with computer science and simulation, one of the programs at UDC. Just as an example to go into an article that might be a bit relevant. Um, a lot of things going on here, so I'll walk you through it. If you just want the PDF of the article, just click the red PDF link. And at the top, there's a nice cite this button. So you can go and get your citation for, um, in a number of formats. Um, if you use Mendeley, uh, or EndNote, RIS really is the one that's going to work with that on a compatibility level. And then there's a more like this box. Again, if you're doing a literature review, if you're doing a patent search, um, this is um, a very good um, box to use. And I saw the question about Zotero. I have to check about that. that some, I've seen some people use it. I believe RIS works with that. Unfortunately, as your IEEE Client Services Manager, I do not have access to these citation download websites, but I believe RIS works with that. Um, if not, I would recommend the plain text format and you would have to do a little bit of reworking. Um, at the end, I'll talk about our author resources page um, briefly, but you can download the IEEE style guide in there um, if you uh, have um, questions about the IEEE style, um, which is similar to the Chicago manual. So that's what I would recommend for that. But back to this article here. Um, one good thing with that personal account we've signed into, I could set a citation alert for this article. Every time somebody cites the article, I'll get an automatic notification in my email. And then I can scroll down further by section here on the left, much like a search result page, I've got facets here. So I can go into authors and there's expandable boxes here for each of the sections. And I can access the figures, download the full size of them. You can access your references here citations as well. Again, if there were any patent citations, this box would be um, highlighted right there. Keywords, both IEEE keywords and the inspect keywords and any author keywords that might have been included when they published the article. And then we have article metrics at the bottom. So you're able to see how often the article was used and get any citation statistics there as you will. So that's a little bit about a full text of an article. I'm going to click advanced search because I know we discussed how that's changed a little bit over time. Um, but for instance, I could do a search term like computer science, for instance, and I could search full text and metadata or full text only. So again, from that search we did originally, that was metadata only on the home page. To do your full text searching, you're going to go into advanced and command search here. So I could do full text and metadata and Georgetown University, for instance, if we're interested in seeing what's going on across town, I could do this under an author affiliations field. 
I like the author affiliations field, as I mentioned, sometimes I run a search by region or by, um, by institution. Um, you can use a city, a state, a town, a country, a university, a college, a uh, government ministry or agency, whatever you think you could affiliate an article back to that would be uh, attached there. And I also like funding agency, especially I like to talk about this with universities because you could go and for instance, computer science, um, you could go and uh, for instance, let me see, National Science Foundation. I could go and type that uh, in there um, or NSF. I can add up to 10 lines of search if I need more in here. Um, so, you know, if you wanna see what's happening with computer science projects at the National Science Foundation. This is great uh, for researchers looking for funding. Uh, they can see what some of these government agencies uh, around the area here might be involved with. Um, so, and you might discover opportunities with the advanced search. So um, very uh, handy. And there's a number of other fields, including the author ORCID ID. Many of you on the call are probably familiar with that. It's orcid.org. That's the website. It is a persistent number that is associated with an author. IEEE does not control that. However, we require it of authors um, when they publish. But it's nice that you can go into advanced search, go into author ORCID ID, and just type in the number here. And it's like doing a very accurate author search. For any of you that have done author searching or maybe done patent searching that had author searching as a part of it, you can know it can be a bit of a nightmare. This takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. And then at the bottom here, you have your search button. And on the right, we have links to search examples and a refresher if you need them for your search operators in Explore. Um, so these, um, again, pretty similar to a lot of databases you may have worked with, but um, it's always there if you need that refresh. I like command search because if you wanna use the full text searching, um, option here, like full text only computer science. Um, you can also put the proximity operator in here as well, um, because you can do the proximity operator on the home page, but of course that's a metadata only search and in advanced search, you cannot use the proximity operator. However, you can do both of those things in command search. So I could do exactly what I did on the home page, but now I'm searching full text only. And actually I forgot you need to put the field operator in front of each term um, that you wanna use. Otherwise it will go and search everything to the right of that field operator in command search. So um, that's kind of a quick uh, rundown command search. If you ever have any questions about that, I am a librarian as well. So I've used this a lot. Um, do feel free to touch base with me uh, in there. But the search examples page um, that's on our resources and help under the help section. I think they're working on this page. It's not appearing. I need, need to clear my cache, but um, you'll get the general idea. Um, the searching box here, um, I like this because that's where your search examples live. And you also have videos and training, video tutorials linked from YouTube. And also you can download our user guides, which are one to two page PDFs. Um, I would suggest the getting started and saving searches. The first one here, if you need a refresh. And for the librarians on the call, we do have your own section up here to help manage your account uh, as well. Um, so what I wanted to do was actually um, open up another window here and talk about the IEEE Author Center, because I know I mentioned that the IEEE Style Guide for any of you authors out there lives here. This is a good website to bookmark if you're a librarian or if you're thinking of publishing with us at IEEE. We have a lot of resources in here to help you all along the way from article templates to the style guide. Um, also, um, you can sign up for our author newsletter, but it gives you a lot of uh, a lot of ideas and a lot of suggestions and helps keep you on track um, as you go through the authorship process. So it's IEEE Author Center um, dot IEEE dot org. And I'm going to put that in chat uh, right now if you need it. Um, so that being said, I'm going to go back to our slides and put up our last slide here um, before I open it up for questions. This is my contact info um, and your account uh, manager, Tom. Um, the training at IEEE.org uh, email goes to the entire client services team. 
Um, there's 12, uh, 11 of us from Singapore to San Francisco. I'm actually in Arlington, Virginia, so I'm pretty close. Um, so I'm usually around if I'm not out of the office, but if it's urgent and I may not be here right away, just email training at IEEE.org, but you can touch base with either Tom or myself for any questions you may have. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to end the recording and then I'm going to open it up for uh, questions um, either on the phone or um, via chat. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day.